Well, hello and welcome to another Public Projects. Joining us now for a four night trip. We're going a little bit further south in France. Uh, we're at the crossing. We're about to go through to customs. We have just bumped into Dan Yeomans and Loz from Nash, who are going to a similar area in France as well, pretty much the same area. So we're gonna kind of convoy the way down there. Uh, and yeah, four nights, a bit further south. Let's see how it goes. Cool lake, isn't it? Yeah, another cool place. Nitchdy just started raining. With the whole drive down here, we haven't seen a speck of rain. The second we've shut the van door, it started absolutely humping it down. But yeah, it's another cool place. Um, can't help but ignore, or well, can't ignore, how busy it is. I mean, I'd say probably, I don't know what, a third of the swims are taken? Mm. I'd say it's Friday afternoon now. So, I feel like it might only get busier. The other lane next door is fairly empty, but you know, there's probably a reason this is busy. So, yeah, right, it's absolutely smashing down now. My vote person is going to have another look at these, other, well, go and have a look at these other lakes, I think, see what the boys think. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a wet one, that's all we know so far. Oh, I'm smashing it down. <laughs> so, we're back in the van, classic. Uh, we've just been to our second location and found out that it's actually private so um, we're heading to a, the third one of the day now not too far away so um, yeah hopefully fingers crossed we've got a little break in the weather now as well Tristan Keir got soaked at <laughs> the first one so uh, yeah we're, luckily we'll be able to look around this one hopefully stay dry um, and have a good look round while it's not raining and I just missed my turn. So a really nice Dutch angler just come round and informed us that we can't night fish on this lake other than the one bank where he's fishing and it's pretty stitched up over there. So realistically we can't fish here so he also informed us that the lakes we previously walked around, which we really liked the look of, and we were kind of in the middle of sorting out where we were going to go, stay here, go back to there, has some very large fishing, and you can only night fish them at weekends, which it is now. So I think we're going to go back there, and hopefully get a proper big one. Fish up to 31 kilos, I think he said. It took off fancy straight away that lake, didn't uh, it? But we had other ones it, to see, so... I much preferred that lake, yeah, so much, way, much preferred it. It was wild, it was clear. It looked like it held big fish. It sounds stupid, but it looked cool. So yeah. is that decision made then? Let's go, let's go. Let's go. So we just got back to the lakes we came to first thing this morning or the afternoon and the same areas are free and we've just seen a few fish bosh fa fairly close in but also just spoken to a Dutch angler who has said it's fishing very very hard and by the sound of it not a fish has come out in a week maybe two the other lake apparently is a bit easier so now we're deciding what lake to go on It'd be nice to get a few bites this lake from what we gather, harder but bigger fish. So it's just weighing it up. All right, you know the rules. Longest straw, first pick. Shortest straw, last pick. Yay! Some fishy edge on my Incremino. <laughs> oh yeah! 
it out and I'm going to make my own spot. Look. heart going a little bit <laughs> you couldn't write that I was about to set my net up and I thought oh that's a good clip actually I'll quickly run around and get the camera from Louis got the camera chat to him for literally 20 seconds yeah and he was and my fucking my, my machine started going off I was like what the <laughs> yeah, take that as you will I carp in the past after Bream I've said it a hundred times but it does happen so it's good I was obviously fishing and it's quite snaggy out there, so good. I'll take that, but I'll have a picture. Good morning. It's our first morning here. Woken up and fortunately, that dreaded word, we haven't woke up with a fish on our first morning. Um, Tris did unfortunately lose one last night. Um, it was a quite an unexpected quick bite to be honest. Um, I think you'd only just got the brolly up, hadn't you mate? Yeah, I was just and, putting the third one out. And it was up and it, and it was off. Um, that was shortly after a bream. Um, so yeah, to be honest, we kind of went into the night fairly confident, obviously with a bite quite soon. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, uh, no fish this morning. So as we do, oh, God. oh, 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 no, no, no. the sparrow just flew through it. Oh, did it? <laughs> as we do, we've been sitting no here this morning. <laughs> with a coffee. As you were, carry on. It's all right, I've been talking anyway. Oh. Um, yeah, so we've been sitting here this morning, um, hatching a new plan, as we like to say, um, which has involved speaking to a few friends. Um, these trips, you always do rely on a bit of help, um, as well as a little bit of uh, preconceived knowledge and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, we've got a plan. Um, it involves a bit more driving, um, potentially via a tackle shop as well to get some bigger leads because I think where we're going, we're planning on using a boat, um, which could be long toes. So some bigger leads will be required. So if we can find a tackle shop on route, which I'm sure we will, uh, we'll stop off there. Probably need to get some more supplies. Again, we're going to be fairly remote at this lake. Like where we are now, it's really accessible. We can drive to the back of our swims. Um, we should be able to do that where we're going, but we're going to be quite remote. So we're going to get some more supplies so we can be pretty self-sufficient where we're going and hoping to stay there for potentially the duration of the trip. There are some other options in the area, so and it is a busy weekend here in France with anglers. So if it's busy, then we'll find out, but it's one of them, drive there, check out the areas we can get into. If it's busy, look at our backup options. If not, then we can get cracking again, but it's about 10 o'clock now, so we are gonna have a sharp pack up. All the gear's gotta come out the van, which is savage, but get that done, get back on the road, get some supplies and get to the new venue. Well, that was an eventful journey. 24 hours. <laughs> eventful 24 hours, but we have now arrived at a very, very cool place. It's somewhere we've uh, actually known of in the past and wanted to fish. So, um, yeah, we've got one of the points. Point swims. Is there is quite a few people fishing though. I'm not going to lie. This is one of the last sort of fishable areas. Certainly when there's three of us anyway. So. Yeah, not going to wait too much time. Waste too much time. We can barrel all the gear across quite nicely, and we can all fish from the same point. Keep it quite social, and yeah, we've got loads of water that we can cover as well. So, yeah, been slightly deflating driving around for several several hours, but I think we're all uh, in good spirits now. And yeah, as I say, looking forward to getting set for the next three nights. Three nights. So yeah, let's go. We're finally settled at a lake, well, say settled, uh, getting settled at a lake um, that we're all happy with. Haven't seen any fish since we've been here, but to be honest, we've been um, you know, getting all the kit out, getting ready, um, tying rigs, getting ready for the night. It's a very, very public lake. Um, as you can probably hear, there's a couple of picnics going on around us, a few people swimming next door. Um, so yeah, it's a, a very public lake. Uh, and a very large expanse of water. I don't know exactly how big it is, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a sizable lake for sure. So um, yeah, it's getting on now. Uh, it's getting towards the evening. It's probably just after six o'clock, maybe even a bit later. So um, just about to go out in the boats to put the rods up for the night. So just preparing a little bit of bait. Gonna take a bit of a mixture to be fair. Um, hopefully find something out there that's at a a reasonable sort of mid depth. Um, don't even know how deep it is yet. Tris sat in the boat as we speak, having a lead around. Uh, got the deeper with him as well to have a little look, which is uh, gonna be a bit of a, a time saver to see just roughly how deep it is out there. It could be 20 foot, could be six foot, you don't know. So um, yeah, time to crack on, get the rods out. Take some bait out in a rod, H block, find an area for the night, get a couple of rods on it, and then probably spread one a bit wider. Hello. Yeah, perfect. Um, absolutely nothing. It is. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it's silk. It's um between five and six meters everywhere and flat, no weed, nothing. There's not much out here, but just showing five point three. And everywhere else is about six meters, so I mean it's not a great deal of difference, but I'll go this way a little bit so it's on the edge. It's quite a 
soft. Quite silty. I think you that are light weed, but that's one spot. Another spot here is about 6.5 meters. So it's kind of the other end of the scale. It's about a meter deeper. what a buzz it is to be on a lake like this this is something that all three of us have wanted to do for a very very long time a, a lake that's solely boat work finding your spots boating them out and uh yeah it's yeah it's a dream really as i said we wanted to do it for a very very long time and um what a lake to what I like to do it on. We're all beginning to find spots now. Well, I think most of us have. I've, I've found my three. I've got some of my, my bottle markers out there. Currently waiting for me to head in the boat out to find the best spot around those markers. And um, yeah, I think the boys would agree. This is one hell of a lake. We spent hours earlier walking, walking around it, driving around it. To put it into perspective, um, we were in the swim in the far far corner down there, and it was uh, about 15 minutes in the car to to get round to the other side. So it's quite a body of water. No means big in comparison to what is actually out here in this part of the world, but um, still a big big lake for us nonetheless. So yeah. I'm in, a, I'm in my happy place right now. I'm very, very excited. I haven't seen any fish yet. And to be honest, it is busy lake here. It is, there's a lot of people fishing. This is actually one of the last areas available. Um, but we want to put ourselves in the best possible position, which we have done to catch a fish. The rest is down to us to, to fish the best we can. So, the boys are just turning up behind me after finishing putting Kieran's rods out. So I'm going to jump in the boat, get mine sorted and uh, get the barbie on I think because I think we're very, very hungry. I haven't really had a chance to get hungry today. It's been manic, but yeah, it's, uh, this is sick. <laughs> this is sick. haven't heard much from us for a while because to be honest we've been pretty damn busy not with catching carp though <laughs> unfortunately um, played with bream at the moment which is a lot of ag when you're fishing pretty far out having to use a boat to place the rigs and the bait and then picking up bream so this was a uh, this was a rod to change over to a bigger bait. Probably not bad bring that. Huh? 
definitely going to change over to a bigger hook bait. I've lost the lead as well. Here he comes. Slimy old thing. This is what we've been getting played with all day so far. Which is... And all night. And all night. We've never been here before, so we don't know the crack on this lake. We didn't know it's for the bream. So we're definitely gonna have to do something with the hook baits and the bait that we're putting around it to try and stop catching these things to give the carp a chance to move in. So back out in the boat, I go. <laughs> going on then mate well <laughs> I've just uh, just put back my fourth or fifth bream of the morning um, they're not the only ones we've had either as you've already seen Lou and Kier have had quite a few as well so um, yeah desperate times desperate measures and all that 18 mil bottom bait and a 15 mil pop up if I had bigger baits I would probably go bigger but a starting point anyway without kind of three Three's up on a hook bait, so uh, yeah, we can do what we can, can't we? We have seen a few show now, which is really good. Well, Kieran has seen a few show now. He's in a really good point actually in his swim where he can sort of see a lot of the water. So um, yeah, fingers crossed. Just gonna sort of continue what we're doing, to be honest. The spots aren't producing carp yet, but they're obviously being fed on. So um, you never know the carp might be there. The bream just might be getting a hook baits first. So. Gonna ship these bad boys out and um, yeah, see how our plan. Adding boilies to your hook bait until you stop getting bream. I'm gonna have a stringer on my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a stringer on my hair rig in a minute. Put a courgette on, mate. <sighs> now I nick that. What do you actually do? I've literally. I had three bream, one on each rod fished hundreds of yards apart from each other within 10 minutes. And in the last 10 minutes, I have replaced those three rods and the first one I have just replaced has just gone and it's another bream. Lake bream. What do you do? Do you wait for them? Do you just go to sleep? <laughs> sleep sounds good. What do you do? Bound. Just need a carp now. Bream have been unbelievable today, unbearable. I actually didn't fish for about three or four hours, hoping they'd move off the spot. But they didn't. I put my rods back on the areas, well near the areas, not even on them. And I had two bream on two rods within five minutes of being back on the bank. So gave up with them altogether. I'm now no longer fishing my baited areas. Three completely random areas pretty much out in the abyss out there so camera's getting wet I'm getting soaking see you in the morning
So it's our third morning now. We haven't really had too much time to update the cameras properly. We've been absolutely on our feet, constantly, in the boats, out of the boats, sorting rods out, catching bream, lots of bream. We've made lots of changes over the last 24 hours to try and combat the bream. Basically, it hasn't worked. All three of us have been obliterated by them. We've changed to much bigger baits to try and stop the bites coming, but even that's not working and there isn't really any other options. The carp haven't arrived like we thought they might. It looked really good last night with the wind and the rain coming towards us, but they just haven't turned up. So we've got 24 hours or just over and we're gonna have to move. We've got literally that time to save it, try and catch some carp and it's just not gonna happen here. I don't think we're gonna run out of power, we're gonna run out of bait. We've just started to pack down slowly. We've got a long drive ahead to get back to Calais, so we're gonna kind of go halfway to cut the drive and make it a longer day tomorrow for us to hopefully get a few bites. So we're gonna crack on because time is against us and we need to catch some fish. Okay, so we're finally at our next destination. The straws are in hand, as usual. We've had a little walk around, um, and yeah, I think we know where we kind of want to head. So, straws are ready. Mr. Tristan is going to pick first. Thanks, change. I'm usually the straw master. You are. Lou is waiting <laughs> to see where people go before he chooses, so that's what we have the closest one. You gotta take it, Lou. He knows, yeah. the, he, knows, he knows the straws. I'm just waiting for them to grow a little bit. Oh, he done. So I'm last. I won. So, oh, so you choose, then I'll go next to you, <laughs> then you get the last pick. This has worked out perfectly for you, yeah. really. I thought this is where well, honestly, in this case, I couldn't care less. No, it's good for you. Because wherever I go, he's going. Right, well, as you can see, it's absolutely tipping down, but I'm pleased to say we've finally caught a carp. Very small, but a bite that we so dearly needed. And yeah, it came at about seven o'clock this morning. I was just watching the water and the middle rod absolutely tore off. And yeah, got a nice little common. As I was playing this one, got it in the net, I looked over and Tris was playing a fish and I think he's got a much bigger one. So yeah, we'll get this one back because it is pouring down and go and see what Tristan's caught. Oh, 
Yes. Paying f for that. Oh, it's a unit as well. Oh, paying f for that. Yo! Well, good morning. It's another very wet day. It's our final morning. We saw fish in front of us last night. And uh, yeah, it's just in general looking good. It's pissing down with rain. It's windy and as carpy as you like. And even better, we've had a couple. <clears throat> so yeah, spirits are now. They've gone from there to there. We're all buzzing. Kia had a small one, as you've seen. And I have had a bit of a unit. So, we'll see. Fingers crossed that I've broken the 20 kilo public curse because I'm the only one out of us three not to have a 20 kilo public fish yet. So, um, yeah, got everything crossed. We've got a bottle of champagne in the van for that when that moment comes. Well, not just for mine, for any 20 kilo. Um, so we'll see. Might be uh, might be popping that anytime soon. So Lou's just on his way around with the cameras now. That's another liner. And yeah, we'll have another coffee and take it all in because it's been a little while since uh, I've had a big fish and it's been quite nice around here on my own. I can just slip it in the net sat down, had a cheese toasty, and just fully embraced every element that's surrounding me at the moment. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, happy days. How about that for a blank saver? <laughs> Wicked 40 pound mirror over the moon. Quite literally on the last morning in torrential rain, we've pulled it out of the bag. Two out of three of us. If Luke can catch one today, then we've got a full house and we can leave as happy, happy as we could be. Nah, chuff. It's been a little while since I've had a bigger fish on one of these trips and it's more than makes up for it. Proper character, it's old knackered, bent up tail. Yeah, over the moon. Yeah. Sorry about your jacket. We went, but we don't care. Look at that. There's not much of a tail there, is there? No, not at all. Oh, God, mate. Well, we've got a little break in the rain, and when I say break, it's not stopped, it's just lighter than it has been all day. Um, after me and Tris both caught fish this morning, we've had to retreat to the brollies, and we've been sitting there all day, well, a few hours, with not a lot to do. It's been absolutely torrential. Been just watching the water and hoping that we might nick one more, but it hasn't happened. We've got to pack up now, head towards the tunnel so we don't miss a train. Um, again, in the rain, so whilst there's a little tiny drop in the uh, raindrops, we're going to crack on, get it done so that everything doesn't get soaked because stuff's got to come out the van, go back in. Yeah, so we need to crack on before everything is drenched. 